Welcome to using satellite images to understand coastal ecosystems. Uh, my name is Stuart Finn and together with Chris Rolsema we'll be taking you through how to use uh, a very important source of information for understanding and managing our coastal environments. So the objectives of the presentation today, which will come in three parts, is really to explain why and how uh, we can collect information about coastal environments from satellite images. Uh, the how will be explaining the processes that we use to collect information in the field and satellite imagery and turn it into maps and information that people can use to understand what's in an ecosystem and how it's changing over time. If you have a look at the slide here in this cross-sectional diagram, you see a coastal environment. Uh, any type of scientific investigation or any management agency or any local community that's responsible for that environment needs to know what's there and how it's changing over time. What we're going to show in the presentations today is that remote sensing provides a way of actually understanding what's there in terms of the biological and physical features which are present and most importantly it lets us collect that information over time and see how the environment's changing whether that's due to disturbances or due to human activities in the environment. There are a number of ways that we can collect that information. The next two slides will show you how we can do that in the field and with remotely sensed data. In the, the maps to the left here, you can see some samples of the amount of seagrass which were captured through field survey. They cover a limited number of sites, uh, but they're collected in a very accurate manner. However, if we want to look at the same area, um, but to map the entire area completely, we can use remotely sensed information. So this is the same information that was shown in the previous two slides, except in the slide on the left there, we're looking at the species of seagrass which are present, and then on the right, we're looking at the cover of seagrass which is present. So these were collected from satellite images, which were then transformed into maps of the environment. The way that we're actually able to transform maps or take images which are collected from satellites and transform them into maps is by looking at the amount of light which absorbed and reflected. This diagram on the left here shows you know, that when you're taking a picture either from an aircraft or a satellite, so that camera on the left, it's showing you the amount of sunlight which is being reflected, absorbed or scattered by the water surface, what's in the water column, like the amount of organic matter or suspended sediment, and what's on the sea floor there, so whether it's coral, macroalgae or seagrass. So those fundamental interactions that you see in that diagram um, let us use remotely sensed images from aircraft or satellite to actually map what's on the water surface, what's in the water column, or what's on the benthos. And we can produce maps like this one. So this is the same area that we saw in the previous slides. It's an area in Moreton Bay in Eastern Australia where we have extensive seagrass banks. And we're able to take a satellite image in combination with field data and turn it into a map of the amount of seagrass which is present. And if we do the same thing over repeated periods of time, we can look at how the seagrass is changing. And we can actually see, is this actually due to natural events or is it due to human activities in the environment, either disturbances or changes in management practices in the area. To actually take an image and transform it uh, into a map which is useful for scientific applications or management applications, we go through a number of standard operations in remote sensing or image processing. If we have a look at the sequence of nine images to the left here, we start in the top left with a raw image. And to get to that image map in the lower right hand corner, we go through a series of steps which corrects the images and removes distortions, which is essentially what the steps are in the first two rows. And we then use field information and expert knowledge uh, along with algorithms to help transform each pixel value into an, in the image into a, a representation of what's on the ground or the seafloor. In this case it's an area of Fiji and we're trying to map the amount of coral, the amount of macroalgae and the amount of seagrass which is present. And when the map's done, we can compare it to field survey information to check how accurate that map is, and so people can make decisions on whether they use that uh, as part of scientific or management information. So there's three types of information which we can collect from remotely sensed data. Composition, so what's actually on the surface of the water, or what's on the benthos. Is it coral? Is it seagrass? What type of seagrass? We can look at biophysical properties. In the case of seagrass, this could be the amount of cover uh, in an area, it could be its biomass, it could be the amount of photosynthesis which is going on. 
And if we collect that imagery and produce those maps over time, we can look at changes in composition over time, we can look at changes in biomass over time, and use that to understand how the environment's changing. Let's look at each of those properties in a bit more detail. Firstly, composition. So with composition, we can map what's on the water surface, what's in the water column, what's on submerged surfaces, and also what's on the land as well. And that can be from quite fine levels of detail in terms of seagrass species. It could be the difference between um, seagrass areas and non-seagrass areas, um, or it could be different types of seagrass. The second type of information was biophysical properties. So this is really the biological, physical and chemical attributes uh, of marine environments. This could be the water surface, what's in the water column or what's below it. With vegetation, it could be biomass or chemistry, with water bodies, depth and temperature. So here's a Landsat thematic mapper image of Moreton Bay in southeast Queensland. Uh, the city of Brisbane's on the left and you have a large coastal embayment with extensive seagrass beds um, to the east of it. We can take that image and apply equations to each pixel in the image, particularly over the eastern banks area, and use that to produce a map of biomass. So that's a biological um, and physical property of the seagrass which we can represent. If we collect that information over time, in this case we're looking at the surface chlorophyll concentration in water bodies and the amount of vegetation on land, uh, we can look at changes or dynamics. So this is a series of images which are collected on a monthly basis from 1997 to the present from the SeaWiff satellite, and we can see the dynamics in sea surface chlorophyll concentration and the amount of biomass over land, and use that to assess what's driving those changes.